you should look out for in a mentor. What you should look out for in a mentor. Until ye ke yan wo lati le gbamu ninu aye olukore. Yes. A mentor is a teacher. A mentor is a disciple. A mentor is a coach. And uh, do you know that it is not every pastor that is a mentor? It is not every father that is a mentor. It's not every mother that is a mentor. A mentor is anyone that is concerned about the well-being and the growth of those below him. Who is behind the camera? A mentor is anyone that has this interest, concern for the growth and the well-being of those that are below him. Those that he is a superior to. That's why I said not every father is a mentor. There are fathers that don't care about their children. I always tell my children, I want you to be like me. I always tell them, I want you to be greater than me. I always tell them, I will continue to do my best to make sure you become great. Now, that's who a mentor is. If you are a father, you have children, you don't know whether your children are eating well. You don't know whether your children have good Christian character. You don't know whether your children are, are improving in anything. You are not a mentor. You are only a father. And it takes mentorship to be a good father. I always tell my children, ask them, they will tell you. I always try to encourage them for the best of them to come forth. That's who a mentor is. Now you are here to you are a mother. You don't care. What to your coffee school school in Russia? Yeah, my brother be be pay. My brother be be buy be mu. Yes, you may be a mother by by biology, but you are not a mentor. And do you know what? Look up. Let me tell you this before I start preaching. Portuguese are those that learn from mentors. They don't reward anyone that is not a mentor. Ndumanje ke yon junji omo ni en tuba shishi omo luma junji omo. En ti o shi u jeni o. I must tell you the truth. Even tuba mwo omo yon lati she. Uli ma lamfa ni ati ni. Tori pe un tuba agmi o ni leka. Now, there are pastors too that are no, they are not mentors. There are pastors that doesn't care. Maybe the members are okay or not. He doesn't care. All he wants is, ah, how will I collect offering today? Oh, how will I collect offering today? Oh, you know, I watch one program. A pastor stood on the altar. He said, God is saying to me, 10 people that will give 100,000 100, for God's servant to fuel his car. Ah, ah, I now ask. And people will come, Masure Funyi. Ke fwe li moto yon shi yon lono. Pe lu hundred thousand yon men wa. They are not mentors. That's why they die anyhow. A mentor cares about the well-being. That's why when you have testimony, I'm happy. That's why I want to read. I read a lot of books. Medical books. So that I will pastor healthy members. Financial books. So that our pastor members that are financial giants, spiritual books, so that our pastor members that are fit spiritually. If I was telling myself yesterday, I said I would look for a time to create a teaching for one month. Our people know how to serve God when they are poor. These members of God, you know how to serve God when you are poor. But when God is blessing you, some of you don't know how to serve God. When God begins to bless you, I notice that as God blesses some of you, your service drop. And the percentage of the people it is happening to in our church is about 90%. I discovered that as God is giving you new open doors, maybe I'll be coming to church only on Sunday. So if you will say, even that Sunday, self, it will not be always. So we will say, I'll be sending only my tithe. Ah, you don't know that 
the blessing comes with new enemies. Every, every realm of blessing comes with. That's why I told one of my daughters in church, is it your shop that is a problem now? That you want to stay in the shop? Everybody is taking communion. How much are you making in that shop? If the devil give you one small arrow, ah, the money you are making in that shop will not be enough to... to there's somebody we are praying for now. She has sold her house. She has sold all her land. She has sold everything. She's not a member of our church, but she's close to us. The devil gave her breast cancer. She was a born-again Christian, went to marry a Muslim. Renounced Jesus. Went to Mecca. Was living big. But when she called me and told me that she has cancer of the breast, she has sold everything. Pastor, please help me. You know where my mind went to? Was when she renounced Jesus. You, you must not allow your, your, your commitment to God to drop when God bless you. Because your commitment is actually one of the reasons why God lifted you. Ah, I'm a thief in control. What? <laughs> Sorry. What you should look out for in a mentor. Let's look at two scriptures to confirm that mentorship is a biblical concept. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 1 and Philippians chapter 3 verse 17. 1 Corinthians 11 1. Philippians 3 17. I read 11 1. It says, Be ye followers of me, even as I also I'm of Christ. Now, who was speaking here? Paul. Who was he speaking to? He was speaking to the Corinthian church. He just Corinthi lumbasoro. Only a man telling me, get get be me no she tell a Christian. Look at it. Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. You know, some Christians used to say, I don't follow any man. Jesus ni I don't follow. Have you seen Jesus before? If you see Jesus, either you see him in Revelation, or you see him on the day of Rapture. But Jesus, our Lord, has put leaders in front of us that we should look to. I met one pastor. He's still struggling out now. The pastor said, Pastor Prince, eh, 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 now, confirm the second one, Philippians chapter 3, verse 17. There must be somebody you are following that you call your mentor. Somebody that is your mentor that you must follow. Philippians chapter 3, verse 17. Look at Paul is speaking again. This time to the Philippian church. He said, brethren, be followers together of me and mark them which walk so as you have, you have us. For an example, can you see? Now, show us from the uh, Message Bible translation. Message translation of the Bible. I want to show you something. Now, look at this. Look at this. It says, stick with me, friends. Keep track of those you see running this same curse. Headed for the same goal. Keep track of them. Watch them. You all know my mentor is, you know my mentor. Apart from him, I listen to so many fathers in, in the faith. People that I see that they are examples of the word of God. People that I see are examples of the word. I follow them. Now, in the generation where I belong, you will always see all our fathers seated with their wives. Bishop Adelako, Mommy Adelako. Bishop Oedeko, Mommy Faith Oedeko. Pastor Adeboe, Mommy Fulu Adeboe. You always see them. That's the, those are the, look, that's the people I follow. You must have mentor. You can't run your life without a mentor. Have I convinced you now that mentorship is a biblical thing? Okay. Our test scriptures shows us clearly that mentorship is biblical. Paul repeated this instruction twice to the Corinthian and to the Philippian church. We also hear and read in several other scriptures where he addressed believers as sons 
and daughters in the ministry and in the faith. Now let's look at two. First Timothy 1, 2 and Philemon 1, 10. First Timothy chapter 1 and verse 2. Look at how he addressed King James Version, please. First Timothy 1, 2. It says, I am writing this to you, Timothy, my word. I didn't hear you. You can do better now. Timothy, my son, where? In, not my biological son. My son, or my meaning we that boy. Now, who can look at you and say, my daughter in the faith? My son in the faith. And you will not feel arrogant. Now, he went on again to Philemon. Philemon. Chapter 1, verse 2. That's not a popular scripture, have you? So if you don't know that there's Philemon in the Bible. <laughs> Over in the Bible. Look at it. He says, and to our beloved Apia, Apia and Archippus, our fellow soldiers, and in thy, sorry, in thy house. Maybe I didn't get them. Oh, sorry, 110. Philemon 110. Philemon 110. Thank you. I beseech thee for my son, who? Onesimus. This Onesimus was met by Paul in the prison. Saul now preached to him. He said, my son, I have begotten him, sorry, I have begotten him, what? In my bones. This my son. So mentorship is biblical. Let's now go to the message. What should you look out for? Number one, there are four things I want to tell you. When you have a mentor, look out for these four things. We are to learn wisdom from their experience. We are to learn wisdom from their experience, which means the experience of our mentors should be our own source of wisdom. The experience of our mentors should be our own source of wisdom. That's why I see, I, I, I pity this, this generation. This generation is very proud. We, we like to give excuse. I love sitting down with elders, so as you see me. When I see elders, you know, in those days when I was coming up in ministry, I have a lot of elderly people that love me. The late uh, Baba Onifade, the late Pa uh, uh, Shosonya. Now, I have them plenty like that. The late Pa Ogunsonwo. Now, when they are around like that, I will sit down. They will be telling me the story of 1943, 1952. In fact, it was from Paonifa day that I learned that, hey, if you have more than one wife, you are in trouble. Baba Onifa day was a man that loved plenty women. Do you know that he impregnated one small girl and his children came home in anger one day and said, Daddy, Daddy, eh, eh, tia, you are not even ashamed of yourself. Look at the small girl in the area that you impregnated. You know what Baba said? He said, that is my problem. He said, Daddy, hey, tia, wun, konti, I want, ara, dugu, mama, so. Baba said, that is their problem. Hey, tia, ruti, wa, awa, omoyi. Baba said, that is your problem. But beloved, when he was to die, there was not a woman in his house. Because he loved multiple women. And one thing you should understand, two women cannot share one man peacefully. Hello? <laughs> I learned that from him. Though my father too was a polygamist. But it was from Baba Onifade's life that I learned very well that see, if you want to live long, you don't want trouble. Marriage the one that God gives you. Now what am I saying? When God gives you men first, pay attention. When they are preaching talking to you, counseling you, please be learning from their experience. If you have a mentor, you should not go and make the mistake they made. Their own mistake should be your own lesson. And that's what a lot of children of God are not doing. We are not paying attention. 
At times when we cancel some of you, you don't listen. Okay, sister. Okay, brother. Why not do it this way? Especially, do you know where we used to have problems most with so many of our people? It, we used to have problems seriously in the aspect of relationship. When it is time for you to choose whom to marry, some of you don't listen again. Now, this morning, I and my wife were listening to a message and they said there was this current analysis done that very soon America is going into recession. Now, where are people jackpying to now? Answer me now. America. Now, and when America has recession, where will they jackpot that to again? We are to learn wisdom from the experience. Listen, he saw her experience should be a major source of access to wisdom to you. Now, I noticed this in the life of uh, Joshua. Let's go to Joshua chapter 2, verse 23 and 24. Joshua chapter 2, verse 23 and 24. Joshua chapter 2, verse 23 and 24. Joshua chapter 2, put it on screen for me. 23 and 24. Look at this. So the two men returned and descended from the mountain and passed over and came to Joshua the son of Nun and told him all the things that befell them. Verse 24. And they said unto Joshua, Truly the Lord has delivered into our hands all the land, for even all the inhabitants of the country do faint because of us. Now look up. Who were these two men? These two men were the spies. Remember? That Joshua sent to go and spy which land? Jericho. The Bible says when they returned. Where did they return to? Answer me if you read, if you read with me. Where did they return to? They returned to... I didn't hear you. Lesson teacher. They returned to... Don't show me. They don't show them the answer. They've read it. They, they return to who? Eh? They return to Joshua. Now, what did they tell Joshua? They gave Joshua their report. Where did Joshua learn this idea from? He learned it from the mistake of Moses. When Moses was spent sending out spies to go and spy the land of Canaan, how many did he send? He sent 12. They are too much. And when the 12 went, 10 came back with negative report. And the thing caused trouble in the camp. Only two came back with good report. Now, Joshua's, it was now Joshua's turn to become leader. What did Joshua do? He said, only two came with good report. I won't send ten. My master in his time sent twelve. Ten fumble. Me, I won't send ten. I will send two. And if you go to numbers, you will see, when the twelve were to deliver their reports, they delivered it to the congregation. Now, who did these two deliver their reports to? I didn't hear you. Joshua, can you see that? He learned wisdom from the experience of whom? Of Moses. He didn't allow the two to go and say, No, no, no. He said, they may deliver wrong report. So let them come and tell me first. When God gives you a mentor, he has given you, indirectly has given you wisdom. Now, and what should you be doing? Be looking at the mentor. Be listening to the preaching of the mentor. Be listening to the talking of the mentor. Be watching the behaviors of the mentor. From his experience, I'm telling you, you will gain wisdom. You will gain wisdom. I come again, you will gain wisdom. But that will be only if you look very well. I wrote here, if you make the mistake of your mentors, then you didn't learn from their experience at all. God gave you mentors so as to help you escape the error traps that the wicked have set for you. And I must tell you this truth. Life will set for you several error traps. But it takes wisdom to escape. Something happened in 1 Kings chapter 12. One to eight. There's no time. I'll just relate it. Uh, when Rehoboam became king, do you remember him? The son of Solomon. The son of the wisest man who ever lived. When he became king, the people came to him. They said, we loved your father. Yet there were abundance in the days of your father. But your father was too hard. Your father was too tough. 
If you are going to lessen the burden, we will serve you forever. You just lessen the burden, we will serve you forever. Now, you know what Rehoboam did? He went to the elders that worked with his father. And the elders said, you know what you are going to do? Just go and tell these people that you will serve them with your position as their king. And you will see what will happen. Then he went to the ordinary men, his age mates. They said, what is it? Ah, you are king. Tell them that my father disciplined you with whip. But me, you will use scorpion to discipline them. And you increase their burden. Do you know that that was what tore his kingdom apart? Why? Because he failed to take wisdom from the experience of those elders. When God gives you a mentor, please pay attention to learn wisdom from his experience. So I hear. Number two, what should you look out for in the mentor? Number two, look out for, number, that's number two now, the shared experience, shared experience of your mentor's encounter. I'm coming again. The shared experience of your mentor's encounter should steer in you a strange and strong hunger for God. I come again. The shared experience of your mentor's encounters should stir in you a strange and strong hunger for God. Now, go back by day. Si mento eni pelu alone to batin sorrow. So so ka alone ba mi pa din ba ba. O ye ko ma ru so ke ipo nbe fun olorun ninu re so you know what anytime you hear of encounter it should stir up and hunger in you i remember you know many years ago and that's one of my sons told me he said pastor that thing you shared really help you when my marriage was just two years it's going to 21 years this year i didn't understand marriage i was a pastor before i got married so i didn't understand marriage and you know when you are a young brother if you want to get to church by seven, you will get to church by seven. Abby, if you are a young brother, you still come late to church, they should check you. Something is wrong. If you come late to church as a young brother, you will not come at all when you marry. So, when we got married, I used to wake up when I, you know, I will not be waiting. My wife is not yet ready. Ah, she could be in a day, she for me by. That was the kind of feeling I was having. So, we started having little, little misunderstanding. To me, I thought going to church is all about going with my message book to learn and with my Bible. But when my wife is dressing, ah, you are dressing like you are going to party. Church, landlord, I confess, I have a lot of you know. I didn't know that women are different from men. Then I went back to God. Lord, are you sure I didn't make a mistake in marriage? And God said, son, I won't forget that encounter. See marriage as a true life stage drama where you cannot afford to make a mistake. You have a script. Your wife has her own script. Follow your script and let the movie director determine who is doing well or not. And I said, Lord, what is my script? He said, your script is husband, love your wife as Christ loved the church. Whether she submits to you or not, that's not your business. You just love her. Do you know that as I started practicing and following my script, I discovered that we started having joy. Now, if I love my wife, I will not love to leave her behind at home to come to church. So what will I do? I will wake up early and help her do some things that should make her late. Am I communicating? I won't want to wait for her. Okay, okay. I uh, say, she's my wife. She should go and cook. She's not my slave. Yes, if that's a duty, women do. But for us to get to where we are going on time, there's something that says I will not wake up very early. And why will she come late? She will be coming late because she will be thinking, ah, if this man finish preaching, at least in the afternoon, my jail, you can soon your son. I, 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 am I communicating? So all this, I, as I followed my script, do you know, I discovered that my marriage began to work. 
That encounter alone that I shared has helped a lot of people. You pay attention to the encounters that your mentor has. And as he's sharing it, oh, I was in a vision, God showed me this thing. You don't joke with those things. When you hear it, you should allow it to develop in you a strange hunger for God. God, I want to hear you like my mentor. Listen, a lot of protogy lack hunger today because they are not paying attention to the shared encounters of their mentor. They, the reason why a lot of young, young ministers, today's leaders, don't have hunger for God. Why? A lot of them are looking for a new need. The reason why a lot of young people today don't have hunger for God is because they are not paying attention to the encounters. I will share some things with you as we, as we move on. Praise the Lord. I say praise the Lord. Now, I wrote here, see, the, see how the disciples came to Jesus in Matthew 17, 19 to 21. Now, look at the encounter they had. A man came to, G, to Jesus and said, Jesus, see you. I brought my son to your disciples. They could not even cast him out. They, 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 they cannot solve his problem. They couldn't cast out the demon in him. And Jesus looked at them, shook his head. And face the boy and ministered to the boy. The boy was healed. What did the disciple do? They came because they were interested in doing what Jesus did. They, they were interested. Master, show me now the scripture. Matthew 17, 19 to 21. They came to Jesus. Master, why could we not cast out this devil? Then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, Why could we not cast him out? Why could we not do it? And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief. For verily I say unto you, If you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you shall say unto this mountain, Remove ends to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Can you see that they wanted a higher realm in Christ? Hello, if you want your hunger for God to increase, pay attention to the shared experience of your mentors and encounters with God. You pay attention. Let me share four with you that I had, I learned from mentors. The first one, when my mentors shared with us, he told us one day, he said, Pastors, do you know that there is no day that somebody don't come to bless me financially? There is no day he now told us how he got that encounter from God. That God told him one day that, son, as long as there is a day, somebody will come in to bless you. Ah. Everybody loved that. Or oh, don't you like that? He said there was one night around 11. Nobody had come. 11 p.m. He said around 11.30. Somebody was just running, running. And honey at the gate. Bah, 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 bah. Ah. He told them to open the gate. What happened? He said, I hate you. But God said, I should give you this money. <laughs> I hate you. But God said, I should give you this money. To fulfill that prophecy. He now told us how he got that covenant. He said he made up his mind that there will be no month he will not give a seed to his mentor. An offering to his mentor. He said, he didn't start that day. He started, was giving and giving. And he said, one day he gave one. And God said to him, call him by name and said, as long as there is day. Do you know that I allowed that encounter of his to teach me how to improve my giving life? I learned this one from Pastor Ye Adeboe, the second one. This one I want to share. He was preaching on NTA many years ago. I was still a young Christian brother in the fellowship. And he said, I want to give more, back to more than the six children that I have as a present. But when I thought about the motherless, fatherless babies, I decided that I won't give back to more than six again. I will use the remaining three because I wanted nine children to take care of other people's children. I was watching NTO. I just knelt down in front of the TV instantly. 
I said, Lord, I want four children, two boys and two girls. But because of this I've had, so that I can be a blessing to those that don't have, Lord, I will give back to two girls and a boy. I will use the space of the other fourth one to take care of other people's children. And I stood up. Young brother, not yet married, not even yet engaged. This is me. I have two girls and a boy. And we are taking care of him. In fact, today, there's one widow. I and my wife, we are giving money to go and start business. Today. We gave two of their children scholarship. Their father died. So, in their family, their schooling stopped. One is 11, never went to school. Another one is 8, didn't enter school. Then another one is 3, did not go to school. The one that is three is the daughter's, had his, uh, the woman's daughter's daughter. So I said, I can't take all. We took, uh, my wife said, she, the woman should come. She came to the house. She, they are 11 people. They came to the house. She said, okay, give us your eight-year-old son and your three-year-old granddaughter. We will train them free. What do you do? He said, a giant monta. She told us, you know how much she asked for? 10,000. 10,000 to you, Pastor, mommy, Timba Fili Rie, we took the daughter, we employed her as a cleaner in the school. But 30 mama, 30 mama, I see, on Monty, no, see, 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 school love. You know, when my wife and I agreed, I remember the day I knelt down. Now, I'm sharing all these things. All these things too should give back to encounter in your heart. Am I communicating? Mommy Adela can share one with us. Mommy said, Encanta, bless me. Mommy said she doesn't pay tight after God bless her. Her own first day of the month, she will sit down. Lord, I trust you for one millionaire this month. I'm just giving an example. She will now go to church on Sunday and pay tight ahead. <laughs> He said, and, I, and I'm always shocked. The tight I pay ahead at the end of the month, I get the money. That one too steered me up to go. You know what it steered me up to do? I've not started paying ahead. It steered me up to be more committed to my tightening. Well, let's take number three. Let's stop on that of encounter. Fourth thing you should look out for in a mentor. Are you learning anything? Have you learned anything at all? Fourth thing you should look out for in a mentor. Number three, impartation. 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 Listen, some spiritual gifts, or let me not say some, spiritual gifts are transferable. Understand that spiritual gifts are transferable. And you only transfer spiritual gift. Now that's what we call impartation. You get some things by transfer. A mentor can impact some things into you. Now look at the first one. Impartation can come by laying on of hands. That's Deuteronomy chapter 34 verse 9. Put it on screen. Impartation can be received by laying on of hands and by relationship. We'll look at the second scripture, Second Kings 9, 14. Look at that of impartation by laying on of hands. Deuteronomy 34, 9. The Bible says, and, and Joshua received wisdom. Look at it. 34, 9. 
34, 9. Deuteronomy 34, verse 9. And Joshua, the son of Nun, was filled, full of the spirit of wisdom. Because what? For Moses had laid his hands upon him. This one, he didn't read the book to be wise. He was, it was impacted into him. Now, by relationship, you learn that from 2 Kings chapter 9, verse 14. Second, sorry, 2 Second Kings chapter 2, 9 to 14. 2 Kings chapter 2. Elijah did not lay hand on Elisha. And it came to pass. When they were gone over, that Elijah said to Elisha, Ask what I shall do for thee. Listen, God can... God, uh, 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 let me put it in a way you will understand so I will not confuse you. Mentors have divine capacity to give you certain spiritual gifts. Who made it so? God made it so. He asked his potogi, what should I give you when I'm gone? And Elijah said unto Elisha, ask what I shall do for, you, for thee before I'm taken away from thee. And Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. That's what I want. Impartation can come by what? By relationship. Now, when you, you find a mentor, serve God under them. I wanted to play you a video, but there is no time. It was Topia Labi that was talking to two musicians, gospel artists. He said, look at them. They have been serving me, but today I want to impact in them. He said, and throughout their years of following me and serving me, they never asked for microphone from my hands. They are good singers, but they never said, mommy, I don't know whether you have watched it before. He said, he said anytime I'm in, a, in, I'm in Abel Kuta to go and rest, this lady will leave her husband's house to come and stay with me in the hotel. She will make sure I eat in the morning. She will make sure I eat in the afternoon. She will make sure. He said, and when I'm going, she will buy our father rice, package it and give to her. He said, but today I want to bless them in the presence of these people. He called the second one. He said, that one too. He said, you know what kept touching me? I will show you. If I can show you today, maybe by uh, um, Sunday or after our leader, I will see. I will, don't worry. I will create time to show you. He said, what touched me most is that they never asked for mommy and they came in calling five minutes. What so many people are looking for is not grace. What some of you are looking for is opportunity. It's platform. Platform doesn't make people. It is grace that makes people. So your mentor has divine permission to transfer into you some peculiar gifts that God has deposited in him. Let's take the fourth one, which is the last one. Then we go to the next service. The fourth thing you look out for in a mentor is accreditation. Everybody say accreditation. Accreditation. Now, by your virtue of relating faithfully well with your mentor, some people will like you. Now, I, I had an encounter yesterday when I was studying. 2 Kings chapter 2, 1 to 6. Why do you think Elijah said to Elisha, Fari here, for the Lord have sent me. Now let's start. And it came to pass, when the Lord would take up Elijah into heaven by the whirlwind, that Elijah went with Elisha. Look at the journey. He went with Elisha from Gilgal. Show me verse 2. And Elijah said unto Elisha, Tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord has sent me to Bethel from Gilgal. He do, do Elisha, God has sent me to Bethel. That one said, No, may God deal with me if I don't follow you. He followed him. You know what he was doing? As they were going from Gilgal to Bethel, Elijah was using style to show people this man is closer to me. He was establishing the law of accreditation. As they got to Bethel, you know what Elijah said? He said, you know what? Will you stay in Bethel? 
For the Lord God Almighty have decided to send me, have decided to send me to Jericho. Read for that you say it. He said, no, may God be with me if I don't follow you. From, from Gilgal to Bethel, from Bethel, they were walking again together, walking again together. People would be saying, ah, ah, Papa, you close my like thou. Papa, you close my like thou. When you only knew, they got to Jericho. Then, Elijah said to Elijah again, the Lord have sent me to Jordan. Tarry here. He said, no, sir, I will follow you. They went to Jordan. As they were going, people were seeing them. In fact, the Bible talks about sons of prophets who were seeing them and were saying, ah, do you know that God is taking your master today? Do you know? You know what Elijah was doing? Elijah was using his personality and image to make Elisha acceptable. I want to ask you a question. You are leaders. That's what this service is meant for. How well are you relating with your mentors? How well? How well? Who is accrediting you? I don't care. Even ordinary tertiary institution here, they will give children, before they give you admission, they will give you attestation form and they will say, go to a clergyman to sign it for you, a clergy. I've written for so many of our members. Right? And I will stamp, seal, and sign it. These are the four things why God gave you mentors. What's number one? Their experience should give you wisdom. So when they are talking, don't do as if you know. Whatever you know, put it in your pocket. You know why so many members of our church have not changed? They know more than me. So when I'm teaching them, they don't listen. Some of them, when they, they, are, they are teaching, they are busy arguing. Could they reverse out? Could they reverse out? Please, those of you are behind, check the gen. Okay, no problem. Okay. Could they reverse out? I visited one of us. I went to dedicate his house this week. And he told me something that touched me. He said, sir, I have 11 notes filled with your message. 11 notebook filled with your message. You know, I got back home. My shoulders were high. Yes. So I didn't know that I have children that listen to me. I thought I have stubborn children. He said, 11 notes filled with your message. The, when your mentors are talking, keep quiet. Even if you know where they want to land, keep quiet and pick the wisdom. What's number two? You learn from their shared, from the what? Their, their shared encounters. If your mentor is telling you, I read 10 chapters and you are still seated, you are satisfied, struggling to read one chapter of the Bible. That person is not your mentor, you are not learning. What's the tough thing? Impartation. The reason why God gave you mentors is for you to receive impartation because spiritual gifts are transferable. There, it's not everything you learn. There are some things that will be impacted into you. Bishop Oedeko said in one of his messages that really blessed me. He said, there was, anytime I go to the late Kenneth Egan to sit down, to, he said, I listen and watch him as if I'm listening to God. He said, and the day I will receive his his spirit. He said, I saw something leaving him, not knowing that he will die the following month, and entered me. He said, and I fell down. And people were watching what happened. They didn't receive anything, but he received something. I don't like saying this, but I'll say it. Anytime I go to my mentor, you know, the question and answer time, I got, that's the best time in every of my fellowship with my mentor. He will come with questions. And I will focus. I will focus. The way he answers each of the questions always make my day. Impartation. And what's the third one? Accreditation.
These are the reasons for mentorship. We continue next month. So mentorship is biblical. And I told you when we started, every parent must mentor their children. Every, every uh, husband must mentor his wife. And I told you, you cannot be a mentor if you don't care about the well-being of your pathology. Do you care about your wife? If you don't care about her and you don't look for her well-being, she can't submit to your mentorship now. Let's close this leadership meeting this morning so that we can go to the service by 15 after 10. If you are blessed, put your hands together for the Lord. Be on your feet.